Hey there folks, Son of Terra 92 here, welcome to another video log. A few weeks ago I was watching a YouTube video on the Big Bang and the creation of the universe. The video showcased many interesting images of the Eagle Nebula and other nebulae that exist in the vast uncharted depths of space. One of my all-time favorite images ever taken by the Hubble Space Telescope comes from the Eagle Nebula. I'm referring to the aptly named Pillars of Creation snapshot. All of it is glorious, glorious stuff by the way. First of all, to all you viewers out there, I was wondering if we could get a discussion going on down below asking for you guys to share your so-called cosmic experiences. I'm pretty sure most of you have seen at least some images taken by Hubble. Go ahead, post whatever pics you think are the most interesting, give your suggestions and share with everyone on the channel. Now moving along, I was watching this video, scrolling down below, looking at the highest rated comment section, I saw that someone commented the words, it's not just out there, it's in us. What he meant by this comment was that the very stuff that makes up the universe up there, it doesn't just exist in the pinpricks of light we see making up the night sky. It's also the very same parts and ingredients that make us up as human beings. Now, for those of you hearing this for the first time, you might be thinking, what kind of crack have I been smoking? Well, let's think about this for a moment. Our bodies have a chemical composition by percentage mass of roughly 65% oxygen, 18% carbon, and 10% hydrogen. Now, the rest would comprise of such elements as phosphorus, potassium, calcium, and sulfur. Have you ever wondered where do these elements come from other than the Earth? Well, according to the theory of nucleosynthesis, nucleosynthesis, which is the theory of the creation of new atomic nuclei from pre-existing nucleons, all the constituent atoms and elements that comprise our bodies and the world around us were forged in the fiery hearts of stars millions of light years away. What this means is that a star, including our sun, is actually a giant nuclear foundry that is responsible for making life possible in the first place through its nuclear reactions. Now, if you could trace all the atoms in the universe far back long enough, you would find them undergoing phases of heavy element enrichment within a star. Now, there are four distinct types of nucleosynthesis, primarily Big Bang nucleosynthesis, stellar nucleosynthesis, explosive nucleosynthesis, and cosmic ray spallation. In today's video, I'll be taking a more detailed look at stellar nucleosynthesis. Now, stellar nucleosynthesis occurs in stars throughout the stages of stellar evolution. It is what makes the generation of elements from carbon up until iron possible through the nuclear fusion process. Now, you see, when a star ages and one form of nuclear fuel is exhausted, another form would ignite given that the temperature rises sufficiently enough. Now, this results in the enrichment of heavy elements. Now, let's talk about carbon. Carbon is very important because it is formed via the triple alpha process. Now, according to classical decay, an alpha particle or an alpha ray is a single helium nucleus. In the triple alpha process, three of these helium nuclei would combine to form a single carbon nucleus. This process is fundamental towards the building of ingredients that are essential towards the formation of life. Now, in the case of the stars which have less mass, these less massive stars, the products of nucleosynthesis are distributed throughout the galaxy via such things as mass loss and stellar winds, also known as solar winds. In the case of the stars of much larger mass, the products of stellar nucleosynthesis would be distributed throughout the galaxy via explosive events and supernovae. Now the larger the star, the higher its mass, the greater number of reaction stages it will go through in its comparatively shorter lifespan as compared to stars with less mass and smaller mass. Talking about supernovae, supernovae are explosive events which mark the end of a massive star's life cycle. When a star runs out of its nuclear fuel, it will collapse in on itself due to its own gravity. This collapse will produce an 
a huge explosion that releases gamma rays and will resultingly turn the star into a black hole or a pulsar. Correct me if I'm wrong on this. Now, I'll do further research, maybe in a later video I'll be taking a look at these so-called black holes and supernovae events, but a supernovae would release gamma rays that would sterilize sentient life within millions of light years from the supernovae event. The frequency of a supernovae would be one every 100 years, I believe. Uh, uh, once again, correct me if I'm wrong. You would not want to be near one when it happens. Now, proof of this phenomenon, this stellar nucleosynthesis, appears in the condensed stardust grains of the gas from individual stars. Now, in conclusion, I would like to say one thing. We are the universe, born out of the explosive reactions of when these massive stellar bodies would explode and spill their rich guts out all over the cosmos, making life possible in the first place. Now, this may sound crazy, it may sound absurd, but thinking that this violent process is what gave birth to our planet, what gave birth to the environment, and what gave birth to us. Now, this concludes my video for today, but not the amazing story of our ongoing legacy. I'd like to end with a quote by one of my idols, Professor Neil deGrasse Tyson, who once said that we are all connected to each other biologically, to the earth, chemically, and to the stars up above, atomically. I want to know what you guys think about this. Will you ever look at the night sky the same way ever again, knowing that we came from up there? So go ahead, put your comments, suggestions, and ideas down below. Thanks for watching, folks, and I will see you in the next video.